Good. The gentleman from District 33. Mr. Speaker, to debate in favor of the bill. Uh, the gentleman has the floor. Uh, <clears throat> Sitting through the committee hearing and hearing the testimony on this, my only concern with this bill is that it does not go far enough. Um, and the reason is this is a, constitu a fundamental constitutional issue. Uh, there are several amendments in the United States Constitution that directly should directly prohibit civil asset forfeiture. We're not talking criminal asset for forfeiture here. The Fifth Amendment obviously gives us the right to protection without due process of the taking of our property. The Eighth Amendment, the, the Fourteenth Amendment would apply here. I'm not sure where and when civil asset forfeiture snuck into this country, but, but it's wrong. And let me give you an example that our office handled once, a case of civil asset forfeiture, where uh, a warrant was issued on a falsely um, given affidavit. After the charges were dropped against the gentleman, he ended up spending $20,000 uh, pro almost $20,000 on attorney's fees to get his property back and then agreed to let them keep 3% uh, of the property that they took. That's the problem with civil asset forfeiture. These individuals, if there's no crime committed, have to hire private counsel to get for the return of their property. Uh, it, it just goes too far, this statute, in, in, and I hope maybe at a future time we can peel back civil, civil asset forfeiture more. Uh, this is not a tool that law enforcement needs. They still have uh, criminal forfeiture laws that they can recover these, uh, these drug monies or whatever their, their, the cause may be. Um, this is a good, a well-written law that just does not go far, far enough, and I would ask everyone to vote in support of this, this bill.